motherfucking spam phone calls ruining more than just my goddamn day or my piece fucked my video up. So what I started with was my grandfather taught me how to go fishing about the time I was five. Now I do not remember a time when I could not read, but I do remember a time when I could not write, you know, and I watched Sesame Street. There's not a lot of TV watching in our house, a lot of book reading. But um, Sesame Street was definitely any educational programming my grandmother was down for. And we had the uh, basement set up in the four sections. There was a uh, her section, my grandfather's mine, and my mom's, which had a picnic table, and you could smoke cigarettes in that part of the house, and that was it. My place on earth. We had a separated two car garage. And uh, I didn't have a whole lot of friends. When I was four, I had a little girl across the street, Gretchen, who taught me how to say, fuck you. <laughs> she didn't teach me as a cuss word, though. She taught me and said, it means I love you. So she says, go to your mom and tell her, fuck you. And I says, what does that mean? And she says, it means I love you. I'd never heard anybody say that because my grandmother was big on no cussing, you know. So my mom comes home, I come home or whatever, and I tell her, fuck you. She slapped the shit out of me. First time my mother ever hit me, I was four years old. I do believe before that, when we were staying with Marty, he had told me to say something to her, and I did. And I did get my mouth washed out with soap, and I did not fucking enjoy that. But that was the only time that ever happened. Now, we grew up right next door to a dairy farm. And I mean a working dairy farmer. Grandfather's a milkman and everything. <laughs> and uh, working cows. And my grandmother had bought the lot. It was the first one that came up for sale. And they started breaking up. And it was subdivision. It's Clover Farms. Norwalk, Connecticut. And yeah, you hearing the cows low and having fresh milk. It was a big difference when I was a kid. We'd go hickory nut picking, which my mom called butternuts. And until I was in my mid-twenties, I thought butternuts were an actual species of nuts. I know for you younger viewers, you might be surprised that uh, we didn't always have Google. <laughs> See, there's a lot of effort to go to the fucking library and pull out a book to look up butternuts or if they're real. Black walnuts. And my mom used to, we crack them. I should put butter and salt on them. I put them in the oven. That was my favorite treat coming up, you know, on a nice cold night, winter time. And have some butternuts. <laughs> I guess that's what I called them when I was a kid. Now, uh, because I didn't have a whole lot of friends. I had one boy in the neighborhood, my next door neighbor, is uh, Tony, his family's name was Alvarez, but he was not. Tony Velez. Tony Alvino, Alvino. His family was Velez. And uh, he was my best friend. I loved him so very much. I'm so glad, it's like sad that we're not in touch right now because I don't know whatever happened to him. But we'll get to why I moved around a lot later on. And uh, he was my bestest friend. We used to play dress up. And uh, we'd go sledding. We just did everything together. We were misfits. You know, he was adopted. And I didn't have a dad. So, you know, all the other kids would, you know, be cruel and mean. And be like, oh, you're a bastard. You don't have a dad. And, you know, fuck with him. You're adopted. Nobody loves you. And kids are fucking assholes. But as I get older, I realize that it's because their parents are fucking assholes. There was a couple of boys down the street I did play with too, uh, Eric, and um, 50 now, so <laughs> I don't remember their names, my mom might, but I used to play with them a little bit, they had to swim in the pool, and there was a girl, Dawn, I played with her, her parents made stuffed animals, and she was a weird character. It's a nice neighborhood we grew up in though, like, you know, a little bit of everything, you know people from our family was Hungarian, our next door neighbors were Puerto Rican, people next door to them were Italian, then there was a Jewish family down the street, then there was that one creepy house that every neighborhood is obligated to have, the Sanders place. I sat back off the road right in the curve and sometimes I dream about that place. And it was uh, you know, lots of foliage and stuff and just kind of really always shadowed. It was the haunted house on the block that you were scared to go trick-or-treating to or walk past on a cold autumn night when the leaves were crunching under your feet and the air was rife with spirits and spooks and things like that. Growing up in New England as a little girl who didn't understand the world was actually quite nice. It was uh, really nice. It's one of my favorite memories is of autumn in New England and being a little girl. When I first started school, I started at Fitch School, and I only did a kindergarten and first grade there before they shut the school down. But I remember 
being there and uh, <laughs> picking grapes, Concord grapes, off of the fence line and getting yelled at by the teacher. Like, they could be dirty. Show no shit. And then picking up the butternuts and knowing how happy my mom was going to be when I brought them back. And it's strange because back then you could walk back to your house alone or walk to school alone without having to worry too much about being abducted. I mean, we knew not to get in the car with strangers and things like that. It was also when I was four years old that my grandmother blew up the garage. Now, we did have a separate, as I mentioned, two-car garage, which was kind of it for adults to hang out in the summertime and such. My grandpa had all this, like, tools and working on stuff, and it had a staircase in the back that went up to the old lofts. Uh, my grandmother would put her summer clothes there in the winter and winter clothes there in the summer and just throw random things like that. She would have tag sales, she called them a lot, to make a little extra money. Uh, she was very frugal and very good about making money, and I think that's where I inherited this talent from. Like, if I'm broke, I'm not going to sit around being broke for a while. I'll find a way to hustle money, and I think I get that from my grandma. She would go to thrift stores and other people's yard sales and tag sales and stuff, and then find good antiques and things she knew were worth money. Sell the good antiques to antiques dealers and sell the rest of the stuff, you know, at her own yard for whatever. Yeah, she also was a, a rock hound, but... I want to tell you about blowing up the garage, and that's going to be this segment today. So, my neighbors on the other side, the Velezes, very nice people, by the way. They kept chickens. And, uh, you know, the chicken house kind of close to my grandmother's garage. And being that the triangulation here was our garage, the chicken coop, and then behind that was a barn full of cows. My grandmother and Mrs. Velez fucking hated each other anyway. So, you know, she would blame her for everything. She would blame my grandma. They would be cussing at each other in Spanish and Hungarian. And let me tell you, my childhood was a little colorful. But my grandfather used to be a coal miner down in Virginia. And back in those days, you could just have dynamite. So we had a whole half a crate of dynamite. So my grandma, four years old, y'all, asleep in my little bedroom. <laughs> I'll never forget this. And, uh... I hear a whole explosion that, that I was dead asleep in the middle of the night. Explosion that rocks the house, you know. I, I, I'm scared, you know, I'm disoriented. I see smoke and fire out the back window because I, I peeked in my grandpa's room next to mine, you know, and I saw smoke and I was like, oh no. And I didn't think to go out the back door. Now I went out the front door and they were quick. The ambulance, uh, not the ambulance, the fire trucks were fucking quick. They were like right there. And uh, so I come out the front door, you know, I put my slippers and my bathrobe on. I go and a fireman's like, go back inside. And I was like, Okay. <laughs> so I go downstairs and I peek around the corner of the house and I look and oh, the garage is in flames and fire. And I find out until many years later that my grandmother fed up with the neighbors, chickens bringing rats into her little cubby hole, that she took fucking dynamite and blew up the fucking chicken coop. Yeah, which blew up the garage or she blew up the garage and then it blew up the chicken coop. Either way, my fucking crazy ass grandmother blew up our garage. There was a fucking hole where the garage used to be. And, and I spent the next summer with my uncles and cousins coming along and rebuilding the garage <laughs> bigger and better. But that's just uh, part one of my extraordinary life as an ordinary person. If you want to get you down, I want to do this like a Penny Dreadfuls kind of thing. I'm just going to do little segments and put them over here on my my reddit and if you want to contribute to the delinquency of my major self <laughs> then cash app is uh you know cash tag red paw leather and my venmo is, is cash on red paw leather nola n-o-l-a so uh i'll put those up too and i'll talk some more tomorrow peace